five, four, three, two, one, mic. Sounds like everybody's a little tired from daylight savings time. Turn this up a little bit. Daylight savings time, I'm not a fan. Not a fan. We'll tell you what, we're going to have some energy. We're going to get ready to push on three. Because God is good, right? So let's stand up. Let's have some fun. Let's sing some songs. Let's clap those hands. Let's sing loud. Here we go. Come on, let's get those hands up. Don't cue the lyrics. Okay. Say don't cue the lyrics. Cool. No, they cue it to start playing. Here we go, sing loud. Heads and thunder, and the world was born. Put two on the uh, slave right here. Begins and ends in the dust you fall. Put one on the, on the uh, what's her name? Faith come yeah, Franny. Pull on Franny. Pull on three. You're good. Okay. Come on, see that. Seven looks good. Uh, pull on seven a little bit. Push on one. Seven, uh, put some, find something for seven. Pull on seven. That's what they're coming to focus. And pan up to her. Okay, push on, uh, put two on. Uh, on Libby. Sorry, that was my fault. Okay, cut. Put one on. Uh, put seven back on Matt. Seven on Matt. Okay, put one on the girl right there. Seven's live. Push on three. Push pull on four. Never mind, you can't do that on four. Push on seven. Put seven back. Put one back on Matt. One's live. Uh, put two on the keyboard player. That's fine. Pull on one. Pull on two. Put seven on the. Oh, hold on. Stay seven. Keep seven there. Find some new for two. Find some new for uh, seven. Pull on two. Shoot Franz on the next song? No, no, it's the first two, then Franz okay. goes the third one. Going in on two. Okay. Beverly Bad. To Beverly High. To Beverly Sir. Don't stand. Leave that there and put two. 
cut one, uh, put two on somebody on the right. Sorry. Put two there. Five on two. Let's find something for seven. Pull seven. Down on one a little bit. Okay. Up two. Put, pan over the mat on two. Find something new for. Leave that there. Find something new for seven. Okay. Cut live, seven live, seven take. Frame seven on Matt, full, full, no lyrics. Here we go. Push on Matt on seven. Come on, sing it. Pull, pull on three. Yes. Hand to the right a little bit on three. Okay. You're clear on three. You're clear on three. I uh, put two on. Um, yeah, that's fine. Let's keep doing that. Beautiful. Seven. Uh, follow. Push on two on that. Number seven. We put it on the piano. Yeah. Yeah. That with, keep, down, keep that with. Keep that with seven. You're live. Okay, put two over on her. Yeah. Put camera two. With that light in the background. Yeah. Uh, keep a gentle push on, on Franny. Yeah, yeah. Okay, just stop on that push. Pull back a little bit. You're live. Be careful. Yeah. Okay, get ready to push. When the lights come up, push. Okay, push. Just one. Okay, stop the push. Just one to be on her. Yeah. Can you give me a tight shot on one? Yeah, it's fine. It looks great. We're going to leave that. We're going to keep that for just a moment. 
We're gonna pull on three when we're. Uh... I want to. I just never. Have. And I think just pull. Don't don't cut. Don't jump. Just pull. Put one back on that. Actually, yeah, that's good. Push on two. Slow on your push. Okay. Put, put two, one back on her. Yeah. Uh, not too close because we want something to cut to. Uh, seven. Put seven on her. Stop your pull. Hand one to the left a little bit. Push on three. Instrument for seven. <laughs> yeah, I put on Lego's guitar. Pull on two. Push on two. Hand over to Matt on two. Okay. Pull, pan up on uh, Libby. Pan up on seven. Zoom in on the on the guitar players on seven. Yeah, they're like stacked on top of each other. It looks stupid. Pull on three. Push, turn to a push on three. Slow your push, stop your push. Okay, push on three.
follow on one. Pan three to the right a little bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're not live. It's fine. Oh, okay. You are so good. Pan down on three. On uh, set. No, I'm sorry, on three. Yeah. Okay, we're back to one. Three. Pan out all the way out on three. You're right. Oh, we're gonna fade the black on this, yes? Nope. No. What are we doing then? Leave Micah. Leave Micah, Micah's camera too. On. Well, I know, I but it. It. Uh, we're gonna we're looking at nothing now. You can fade the black if you want. Yeah. Sorry, man. That's my mistake. Never mind. Two. Yep, I got him. Well, good morning, Sorry. everyone. Good morning. My name is Micah. I'm the youth far. pastor Six, here uh, at the Vineyard. When you seven. walked in, yeah, give it up for the youth. For the youth. He doesn't move, so I should be. Good. Yeah. We're so we're glad you're here. We're so glad that your clocks just put zoom seven all the way out, and you can automatically just wake okay. up when your alarm went off. And some people are probably late, but that's okay. You guys are here, so hi. When you walked in as well, you probably got a program. You're probably a little bit sleepy, but you okay. got one. And in that program is your Connect card. So if you could just take a few moments, give us some information. Mm -hmm. First time yeah, guests, we're asking you to give us a little bit more information, your email, your phone number, your address, just so we can send you a brief thank you for being with us this morning. Also, in your Connect card, there's a few different events that you can sign up for. The first one is the Wheeling Egg Hunt happening April 13th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m at Wheeling Park. And now that's our annual egg hunt that we host. It's one of our largest opportunities to just love on the community. To pull it off, we need your help. So you can volunteer to sign up with face paint, help out with the games, the egg hunt itself, or just simply set up and tear down. Now you can do that by signing online or in your Connect card. The second thing is Are we all showing, in. Another, showing all in a second video? Our membership class Are we showing a video before the Sunday, sermon intro? Sunday, March 31st. Yeah. That will be happening at our Wheeling so campus before. after service and Are we lunch showing a video other than the sermon bumper? will be provided. So yeah. once again, all we in is our membership class happening bumper, Sunday, right. March 31st okay. after service so at our Wheeling okay. campus. Okay. Lunch and childcare will be provided. So that way you don't have too many other excuses to why you can't be there. <laughs> All right, so that being said, we're in week five of our series called Parables. Here's Chris. Ready? You're live. Okay, uh, follow on Sue as soon as he walks on stage. We are in week five of Parables, which puts us smack dab in the middle of this series. It's a 10-week series. If you're joining us for the first time in this series, we're looking at the parables that Jesus taught. He taught a lot just by telling stories to illustrate points, and we call those parables. And so we're looking at those, uh, and specifically yeah, about good. the kingdom the first of God, one. the way the kingdom of God works. This is how we pray. This is how we So you're following the message, week. right? And just the notes, getting okay. our arms around this thing called any, the kingdom, because... People, okay. even in his day, had a hard time getting their, okay. their minds around what he, he right. meant by he the kingdom of God. Even his disciples, First, the people who were closest to hey, uh, Jesus, the parable that we're going to look at this week is found in Luke oh, chapter 19. Do do so if you want to turn there, if you've got a paper Bible, you can use your index. If you've got a digital Bible, if you don't know how to get there, then I, there's not really help for you. So, um, But we'll put the words on the screen as, as well. When we get there, but this particular parable, this is kind of a, a crux parable for Jesus because he spent the last three years traveling around the country doing all kinds of miraculous and amazing things. He, he, he's raised dead people to life. He's spoken to storms and calmed them. He's healed people who were ill or restored the sight to the blind and all kinds of stuff. And people have been taking notice. And, and the people of Israel specifically were taking notice. This is where he was in Israel. And they were taking notice because they had their eyes out for the Messiah. And the Messiah was somebody 
who was to come from God and restore the glory of Israel. And they were expecting this Messiah. And so Jesus shows up with these prophetic and miraculous powers. And they're like, he's got superpowers. Like if he turned those powers on Rome, and that's the other thing, Rome, uh, the Roman Empire occupied Israel at that point in time. And they hated that. They wanted the Romans gone. And they're thinking, wow, if he, Can you pan down a popularity is building, everybody wants to be around Jesus. Jesus. And they're thinking as he's teaching about the kingdom of God, that he's talking about Pan a geographic push kingdom, on three. Right about there? Yeah, they're thinking push, maybe if he alive turns on three. his superpowers on Rome, if he goes into Jerusalem and kicks okay, the Romans out two. and establishes the glory of Israel and, and, and yeah. restores Israel to yeah, independence, then, yeah, Mike, then that's the Messiah and that's the, he might be that, him. And they were so excited about this, even the disciples thought that even though Jesus had told them on three separate occasions, when I go... To Jerusalem, I'm going to suffer at the hands of the religious leaders. They're going to kill me, but I will come back to life. He told them that three different times, but they didn't. They're like, well, he doesn't really mean that. I mean, he's going to be king, and we're going to be his court, and it's going to be great. And they just weren't getting what he was trying to communicate to them. And so we find Jesus on his way to Jerusalem for the last time. He is... He's on his way from the northern part of the country to Jerusalem for Passover. Now, Passover is a feast, a festival that the Jews celebrated every year. It was the biggest of all the feasts. People came from all over the world and all over Israel. And so Jesus is making his way down from the northern part of the country to Jerusalem. And he's about 15 miles outside of Jerusalem in a little town called Jericho. And he's coming into Jericho, and he's, it, it's just pandemonium. He's got his whole entourage, plus, you know, it's a pilgrimage from the northern part of the country. All those people are coming along, and people want to be near Jesus. And then Jericho, everybody's buzzing. Everybody wants to be around Jesus, see Jesus, because he's a superstar at this point in time. And maybe, maybe, just maybe, he's the Messiah. And everybody is on edge, and everybody wants to see Jesus. So he's coming into town, and it's like a parade. And he hears in the distance... Somebody yells, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus is like, what, what was that? Maybe it was because it was you know, prophetic language of the Messiah. Or I don't know why Jesus stopped for that particular person, but he stopped. And they brought the man to him, and he was blind, and he wanted to receive his sight. And so Jesus healed him, and everybody's like, whoa, see, I told you. <clears throat> and they make their way into to Jericho, and he gets to this one spot in Jericho where there's a tree on the side of the road. And he looks up, and there's a little man up in the tree. And he's like, He's a wee little man, a wee little man was his name. <laughs> yeah, you know the song, maybe. Anyway, it was Sunday school stuff. Anyway, Zacchaeus, it's his tax collector, chief tax collector for Jericho. And he looks up in the tree, and, and he stops, and the whole entourage stops and runs into him. And, and he looks up, and he says, Zacchaeus, come on down. I'm going to your house today. And it says the crowd was astonished. And the reason the crowd was astonished is because he was a tax collector, a chief tax collector. He was the most hated man in the entire town. He had sold his soul to the devil, to the Roman Empire, to collect money from his own people. And he was empowered to take more than was owed so that he could enrich himself as well. And he had grown rich on the backs of the people in that town. And, and uh, the tax collectors in general were hated by the people of Israel. They were, they were they'd sold, sold out. I did not either. In fact, they were considered lower than sinners. They were like sinners and then there were tax collectors. If you read the Bible, that's how they, they categorize them. The worst of the worst. The person that nobody will even talk to or hang out with. And Jesus stops and says, hey, I'm going to your house. Well, he comes down and they go back to Zacchaeus' mm -hmm. house and everybody's grumbling and mumbling. And what's he doing? And Zacchaeus stands up and you know, they're having lunch, and Zacchaeus is like, he has a come-to-Jesus moment, you know? Like, Jesus is in his house, I would hope he'd have a come-to-Jesus moment. But he's like, he's like, look, I'm going to pay back everybody twice. Or, or no, he says, I'm going to give half of what I own to the poor, and I'm going to pay it back everybody that I've ripped off four times what I've taken from them. And Jesus is like, bingo. <laughs> Kingdom of God, God change life, this guy gets it. And everybody's still grumbling because he's a tax collector, he's not a Christian. Well, he's this is pre-Christians, but he's like, he's not, he's not one of us. And Jesus goes, no, 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 you don't get it. You don't get it. It's the sick that need a doctor. I've come to seek and save lost people. 
And I think what Jesus is doing is he makes this pivot from this three-year-long ministry to the cross, which is about to happen. He's de demonstrating this is the kingdom. We bring healing. We bring grace. We spend time with people that nobody else will spend time with. Put the on. To bring the kingdom to the Especially listening listen to and this then, message. Then he tells this story, this parable. In Luke 19, verse 11, it says, While they, while the blind yeah. guy who can oh, now see, oh, while Zacchaeus and all yeah. his sinful buddies, while the and crowd the next one. with Jesus, while they're all there, the he's like, the yeah. disciples are there. Said, you guys have got to get this. Because he was You're only going to say, while they. quite understanding what is about to happen. And this is what he says. While they were listening to this, he went on to tell them a parable. Because he was near Jerusalem and the people thought that the kingdom of God was going to appear at once. The people thought he was going to go into Jerusalem and stage a revolt and revolution, kick the, the, kick the Russians, I'm sorry, it's ADD, kick the, kick the Romans, they're kind of like the Russians of their day, okay, anyway, kick the Romans out. Okay. And take over, and, and he's going to be king, and that's, that's exactly what they thought. And he's like, no, no, you don't understand. I have, you've got, I'm going to tell you this story. You've got to get this before I go to the cross. And so he says this. He said, a man of noble birth went to a distant country to have himself. Can I stop before I read any further? <laughs> I'm so sorry if you're Russian. I did not mean to insult Russia. I just seriously just kind of came out. All right, all right, back, all right. He said, a man of noble birth went to a distant country to have him himself appointed king and then returned. Mm -hmm. So he called ten of his servants and gave them ten minas. Put this money to work, he said, until I come back. Now, a mina is not a form of money. It's a measurement of weight. And so this could be gold. It could be silver. It really doesn't even matter. He, he called his servants right. together and gave them each that was, something that was really to do good. something with. Call, he, she did it okay. a couple times. Yeah. He said, but his subjects hated him and sent a delegation after him to say we don't want this man to be our king he was made king however and returned home then he sent for the servants to whom he had given the money in order to find out what they had gained with it the first one came and said sir your mina has earned 10 more well done my good servant his master replied because you have been trustworthy in a very small matter take charge yeah. of 10 cities the second came and said, sir, your mina has earned five more. His master answered, you take charge of five cities. Then another servant came and said, sir, here's your mina. I have kept it laid away in a piece of cloth. I was afraid of you because you are a hard man. You take out what you did not put in and reap what you did not no. sow. Oh, no, no, His no, master sorry. replied, "My bad. I will judge you by your own words, you wicked no. servant. You oh, knew, yeah, did you, that I'm a hard man taking out... Second to last word, not last line. I did not sow. Why just, then didn't just, you put my money on I, know, I, I wasn't really talking so about that when one. when I came back, I could have collected it with interest. Then he said to those standing by, take his mina away from him and give it to the one who has ten minas. Sir, they said, he already has ten. This is that middle school. It's not fair. Moment. You know, it's... it's, it's. Anyway, he replied... <laughs> I tell you that to everyone who has, nice. more will be given. But as for the one who has nothing, even what they have will be taken away. But those enemies of mine who did not want me to be king over them, bring them here and kill them in front of nice. me. Mic drop. Boom. It's the end. That says after, after Jesus had said this, he went on ahead going up to Jerusalem. So he's just made it perfectly clear Good what's job, about to happen. Right? People. And they're all going, what, what does that mean? I mean, and you're probably thinking, what does that mean? Well, that's what I want to do for the rest of our time is unpack this because Jesus, what he's doing is he is communicating through his actions and through his teaching what is about to happen. And it's not what they think. See, and the cool part of this particular parable is that this is the only parable that, that we know of that is tied to a real historical story. Yeah, they would have been very, Jesus got their attention. They would have been very, very familiar with this situation because about 20 years before, there was a king named King Herod. You might remember King Herod from the, the Christmas story. 
King Herod had three sons, and when he died, it was his wish that his kingdom would be split between his three sons. Now, here's what you need to know about Herod. Herod wasn't I'm a real cut king. Three. Can he you was frame just seven a puppet like that? king for Rome. They, you and know, Caesar decided who could be king and what would happen. So his three sons, if they were going right there. to become Ooh. king over three Something different there. areas that used to be his kingdom, they would have needed approval Zoom from in Rome. A bit. They would have needed to go to Caesar to get that approved. Like that. One of his sons, Archelaus, yeah. that way we'll only be able to use it when he's right there and they fall into. Yeah. He was a bad guy. He killed two of his teachers growing up. I just like you're frustrating me. I don't understand math. Bang, you're dead. Right? Why is there so he, much he light? Killed, you see the light uh, on the fence, like on the top of that? Because he, he, he executed because of 3,000 the, people the in an uprising. He was a the bad actor. Orange. The people did not want him to be the king. Yeah, it's just the angle. So they actually put together a delegation and sent them to Rome and said, we don't want this guy to be king. He's a bad guy. You don't want him to be king, but Caesar made him king anyway. Jesus has got their attention. Most of them had lived through this. Right? They knew this story. He's so good. He's such Can you push a little bit on seven when he Now, moves. he gives it his own twist with the ten minas. You know, we're going to... The, the, here's some money. Yeah, maybe a little less headroom. Put this to work on my behalf. That's says. good. So what does this like mean? The perfect time that he bought. <laughs> what does this mean for us 2,000 years later? Because What's going on with eight? Uh, I, know, our lives in such I lost my oh, input. Did you shake something? Place. Just move the key. You know, Jesus is saying, look, I'm not going to Rome to kick out. I don't, I'm not going to Rome. I'm not going to Jerusalem it. to kick out the Romans. In fact, I'm going to Jerusalem to die. You didn't say and then, to play, I'm going to go away for a while. I didn't hear no. that, but I'm going to give you some stuff. I'm going to, you, I've already given you some natural talents and skills. You were born with some you resources, and there? maybe you've developed yeah. some influence. And when my spirit comes and lives inside of you, and my kingdom is in, in you, you're going to have spiritual gifts. And my expectation is that you're going to put them to work for me, for my kingdom's sake. Mm -hmm. We're getting close. That's kind of, if you wanted to boil it down real short, that's, that's what Jesus is saying. And he's teaching them, look, everyone has, everyone has a part to play. Now, he Probably said not. each one got one minor. The point isn't that they all got the, the same amount, because we don't all get the same amount, do we? Some of us are more talented than others. Some of us are smarter than others. Some of us are born with more influence or develop more influence than others. Some of us are born with more resources than others. It's not about amounts. We have an equal opportunity to use what we've been given to live for God. We do. To use what we've been given for his gain. See, it's not how much you're given. It's what you do with what you've got. And God expects us to grow, Next. not just Next sit graphic. on, Next slide. but to grow what we've been given. Turn around. You just said it. He really went through this fast. Verse 15, he says, yeah. he was made okay. king Next by slide. him and returned Good home. Job. And then he sent for the servants to whom he had given the money in order to find out what they had gained with it. Isn't it interesting? I love the way he worded that. Wow. In order to find out what they gained with it, his expectation <laughs> is that they up. would say yes. have gained. Sure that they that would have used was this not crack? And they would have grown. Was this not God crack? expects yeah. you no. to do well. He's betting on you. He expects you to win. And to, to, to grow. And God See, the thing is, is that God believes in you more than you believe in you. I think one of the thing that's, things that hold us back from taking what we've been given in this life and leaning into God and his kingdom and using it and growing it is fear. We're afraid, well, what if I lose it? What if I lose it? That was what the, the guy who just sat on the one line and he was afraid. And that's what holds us back. God believes in you. He believes in you more than you believe in you. He believes in you more than you believe in him. He bet the farm on you. He said... Jesus is like, look, I'm going the 15 miles to Jerusalem, and I'm going to go die on the cross so that my spirit can come live inside of you. That the kingdom of God can be within you, and you're in charge of the enterprise until I get back. That's how much he believes. He's saying to his disciples, and he's saying to each one of us, you are plan A in this kingdom of God thing, and there is no plan B. We're almost ready for that. 
And my expectation is that you're going to do great. So get to it. Yes, yes. Olivia. Three get to it. Don't be afraid. See, Jesus is coming back, and he's going to want to see how much we've gained, how much you've gained. He's not expecting you to blow it. But the stakes are high. You know, the, the other thing that we find in this, in this story is it's a, it's a, um, a use-it-or-lose-it scenario. It's a use-it-or-lose-it scenario. This is where they cr- claimed, that's unfair. You can't take it from the guy who only has one and give it to the guy who has ten. Why? But really, when you think about it, God gives us these skills and talents and spiritual gifts and influence and resources and all these things. Well, well, why do I? To use to grow for his sake and for his kingdom's sake and to spread his kingdom to people who desperately need hope and life. And people that have it to share it with everybody else. Uh, we're just going to sit on it. Why would he waste his resources? That's not what they're for. So did Jesus just prove it doesn't work? So take them and give them to people who, someone who's That's crushing interesting. them. Interesting. Interesting to worry about that. And, and, and we think, well, well but then I have to I come up with ten minus, right? Really make an argument. It's not about how much. Right. It's relevant. In, re- in reality, it's about doing what we can. It's about using what we've been given. Some of us are 10 minor people. We'll take one minor, we'll turn it into 10. Some of us will turn one minor into five. Some of us will ter- take one minor and just earn interest on it. And that's kind of who we are and th- what God has endowed us with. And that's all fine. I mean, that's a good start. You know, the, the servant say, who brought five was yeah, praised as much as like the servant who brought yeah. ten. It's not about the amounts that we return. It's the fact that we've done something with what we've been given for his kingdom's sake. We've grown his influence in the world. We well, did go to bed late and get up early. so Every one of us has an opportunity for kingdom impact. Every one of us has a ministry. And doing nothing At least casting crowns was good. <laughs> in the kingdom of God is not acceptable. That's Very what Jesus is saying. He didn't say it yet. Sitting back and being a consumer a question, in the kingdom of God is not acceptable. We say it this way around here. We say uh, one of our core values is saved people serve people. There it is. Mm-hmm. We did it. Like if you have placed your faith in Jesus Sometimes you don't do that. and his spirit has come and, live and come into your heart, and lives there, and his kingdom is within you, then not serving him isn't really an option. It's not what, I mean, he's going to ask, what have you done with what I've given you? See, if you're a Jesus follower, by definition, you are a minister. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Chris, you're a minister. Maybe some missionaries are ministers. People who go to seminary, they're ministers. I'm not a minister. No. A minister is a servant, and you are the servant in this story. Every one of us who claims to follow Jesus. Verse 13, or I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. Jesus unpacks this idea a little bit further. You know, in Jesus' perspective, we, we have a ministry. We're ministers, and we're ministers in the world. And we're ministers in the church. (coughs) And Jesus captures this perspective of being a minister in the world in in Matthew chapter 5. He's teaching his disciples and he says this. He says, you're the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. The salt, salt... In their day, it was the preservative of their day. They didn't have refrigeration. So if they were to slaughter an animal, if they wanted to preserve that meat and keep it fresh for eating later, they would pack it in salt. And there's actually a salt-making industry around the Dead Sea. They would evaporate the water from the Dead Sea, and they would take that salt, and they would pack You know, So if they were going out on a trip on the ocean or some kind of journey, they would pack the meat in salt, and it would preserve the meat and keep it from decaying. And Jesus is saying, look, as society decays, as it decays into narcissism, as society decays into self-gratification and selfishness, you're to live differently. The Spirit of God will preserve you. And as you live differently in the world, you're not going off the cliff with everybody else. They're going to look at your life and go, wow, that's different, but that's beautiful. 
and it's going to point them towards God. That's our part of our ministry in the world. But he goes on, he, he builds this out a little bit. He says, you're the light of the world. A town on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. See, uh, uh, in, they would often build cities up on hills because they were more easily defensible. And at nighttime, as you were traveling out across the plains, they didn't have electric lights and light pollution and all this. So even a, even a candle in the window or a fire you know, that they would use to light the cities would draw people from far away. The city was a place of safety. There weren't bandits and you know, lions and all the other stuff. And so they would, they would, the light would draw them to the city. Jesus said, you're the city on the hill. I just heard defensive. And the light draws people. To God. Able to he be says, defended against. He says, when you're, you're in your home, light you light a candle, you put it on a stand, you don't hide it. You want that light to shine. If you're married to someone who's not a follower of Jesus, your light shining in that home, the way you live, the way you love, the way you serve, the minister to your family, that's their best shot at meeting him. Live your lives as a ministry. Serve, love. Live differently. What we need is one of those in action cameras way. that we just attach a like one of those little things up here and it follows them. Yeah, oh, but go easier go said go than go done. Coworkers will the see GoPros them. do that. They would no. not look nearly as good on this screen. Yeah, no. Is that camera watching us? Jesus calls us yeah. light, not yeah. weirdo. Smile. <laughs> and uh, yeah, candy cam. and so you know, I mean, back. we're peculiar. Yeah, I'm not gossiping <laughs> around the water cooler with everybody <laughs> else. Well, that's a little strange. But don't be judgmental about it. But he's not going to put in the part where I talked about how I have to pee every 15 minutes. <laughs> oh, is that what you said? I wasn't really paying attention at that time. <laughs> I, I did mention on us an opportunity to point Mike afterwards, God. like, you're not going to put she, that in. She'll see the video <laughs> of the, <laughs> she'll see the video of the vlog, the thing on YouTube, and she'll be like, oh, that's a nice title. Part of why we're here. Please don't put that on the vlog, <laughs> or I have to pee every 15 minutes, you should put, I should put that on the title. We lose our light. <laughs> and then the opening <laughs> statement is, of you saying, <laughs> and then cut right into... See, ministry is not an option Wait, what do you vlog? the kingdom of God. It's an expectation. Yeah. Sundays. We'll and talk so about I want to ask you this question. <laughs> what are you doing with yours? We're on page 11. If anybody what are you doing with yours? Anybody got lost in that dissertation? Yeah, I got lost in a while. Wait, why are you Did you, you yeah. Me too. Did you accidentally put that one up? How are you going to no. Where is it? That's in preview. See, Jesus stops one last time before he goes to the cross. He's at the last part of 11. He says, this is the question. This is what's going to happen. I'm leaving the whole operation in your hands. <sighs> you know, I'm going to ask you when we come back. <laughs> what would you do with what I gave you? How did you it's use like a, a bar that you need a chair with resources, yeah. abilities, talents that I put yeah. in your life? What did you do with the we have someone that follows the camera? What did you do with the forgiveness yeah. that I am about to die? And it's way smarter than any piece of technology. The kingdom can come and live inside of you. Who did you live for in this life? You or me? Did you live for your comfort in this world or influence in the next? Jesus misses no church when it comes to that. <laughs> Guys, we live in an age where we are all consumers. I'm a consumer, you're a consumer. We live in an age where we expect to just consume and consume and consume. But I'm telling you, you're not going to find the life you're looking for. You are? Until you, hear you become everything I say to you? a contributor. Well, I just muted it out. I hear it. Jesus taught this in 15 different ways. I love it. I love it. And so this is what I want you to do. At, at, at this moment, if you take out the notes, if you don't have your notes out right now, and a pen that you got when you walked in, and I want you to, this isn't in no. your notes, just write it somewhere in the white space. And I want you to write it down twice. My ministry in the world on top of 12. is blank. And then my well, ministry in the church yeah. is blank. And if you don't know the answer to that, those two blanks, we've got a problem because you don't know what it is. It's good. And I don't say that to make you feel guilty. I say that to stimulate thinking and begin a process. 
what is your ministry in the world? You might say, my ministry is my family. My ministry is my workplace. My ministry is my neighborhood. My ministry is my kids' sports what? team and the other parents on that team or the kids no, there or wherever, wherever it is. But if you haven't you thought think? about it, you're not engaging it the way you need to be. Where is your ministry in this world? Where are you shining light? Where are you being salt in our world? And then my ministry in the church is. Now I could do a whole sermon on ministry in the church. The Apostle Paul talks about how we are the body of Christ. He uses that analogy. That some of us are toes and some of us are eyes and some of us are ears and some of us are elbows and we're all different parts. But he says every one of us is a necessary part of it. Every one of us has a part to play. And when one part isn't playing their part, the rest of the body feels it. The rest of the body feels it. See, it, there's a part for everyone to play in the church if you're a follower of Jesus. And if you're not, you're invited to come play a part too because we'd love to hang out with you. But if, you're, if you claim to follow Jesus, there's a part for you to play. And if you're not serving, you're missing out on unbelievable purpose. You're missing out on connection and community and fellowship with other people. I mean, we actually look forward to seeing each other and we come in on Sunday morning or other times during the week and we build this community that's making a difference together. There's nothing like it. You miss out on that fun. You miss out on the impact. And Jesus is like, I want all that for all of you. He really does. And we all play a different part. I mean, some of us play an upfront part. I do okay up front. You have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with me. I'm a little awkward. You know, you're probably better. You're probably better one-on-one -on -one than I am, or in a small group. That's awesome. Good. You got a part to play. Maybe it's leading a team. Maybe it's opening a door. Maybe it's caring for hurt, hurting people. Maybe it's making food. Maybe it's gathering a small group of people together and talking about the messages and dialing in deeper on the scriptures so that you. Growing in your faith together and building community there. Maybe it's creating a welcoming environment so that when people come to the church for the first time, they're like, man, I feel really loved here. And they're open to hear the message about Jesus. Maybe it's building relationships with kids, whether they're high school or middle school or small kids. And teaching them about Jesus on, on, on their level and speaking into their lives. And there's a bunch of other places. Those are just some examples. But where is it? For you, if you don't know, we got a problem. We wonder why the high school is open. <laughs> so, yeah. if you don't know, I don't want you to feel. Should I should I drop the guilt? I mean, I'm not very good. At, I am Italian, so I have some natural guilting abilities. But but I haven't exercised no, in years. I don't That's want this good. to be a guilt thing. I just want you to figure it out for your sake. For your sake. So, I actually have a great next step for you. In your program, I don't know the blue card. Say it. Pull out the blue card. Yes, this is audience participation. And here's what we're gonna do. Next weekend, we, 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 we said, we, I went, as I was writing this sermon, I'm like, we've got to do this next weekend. We've got to do this next weekend because there are people who don't know. Next weekend, before this service, <laughs> we're going to offer a class Hopefully he's watching that will stream. help you figure out well, we'll how God has together, uniquely wired you and, and help you figure out like where that. in this body of Christ, this church, where you fit, what role you can play. Yeah, how many people are on the and I'm telling you, you will never regret stepping Can we find that out? Service. Yeah. When you go from being how do we know how many a people watching the stream? being a contributor, Press that. you see the screen over there. It changes the Press, way you see Press the picture, and it'll it give you It changes the level of ownership and the quality of the oh, experience. Oh, they won't. Be, be it changes. Press, your, press, this goes from that church yeah, that yeah, I go yeah. to to press, being press the my live church. Feed, yeah. And then this should, is my it mission. Show you in the top corner. This somewhere. is where 31. I invest my time. Where I serve Jesus. It changes you in such good ways. There's more than one reason Jesus expects us to take what he's given us and invest it on his behalf. Another 31 people, plus everyone upstairs. 
So we're going to offer that class next week weekend. So here's what you need to do. That card, you can fill it out. We'll sign you up for the class. Come Your husband better hold you accountable. What were you doing there? Got questions. There's a blue tent in the lobby. Stop by the blue tent and see Myron or somebody else that's in there, and they'll answer any questions you have. But next weekend, just come early. We'll give you a backstage tour. I kind of want to go see Myron now. And you'll be able to sit in on that class and figure out where you're serving. Now, if you're already serving in the church, you don't have to do this unless you're like, I hate where I'm serving. I want to find someplace else. We'll help you. We'll, we'll bust you out. We will. All right. Because we want you to find a place that you fit. That's kind of important. And we'll get you serving. One, because it's, it's going to benefit and bless you. But two, I want you to have a fantastic answer when Jesus comes back and says, what have you done with the last Bless. Because you have a ministry in this world, and you have a ministry in the church. All of us do. We claim to be. Jesus. So Jesus <laughs> gathers the boys up one last time. I'm going 15 miles to Jerusalem to hang on a cross because 14. the wages of sin is death, and I'm going to go pay it so that my spirit can come and live in your heart. My kingdom can come and live in you. You are going to have everything you need to change this world. It's in your hands. It's in your hands. I'm not kicking out the Romans. I'm not establishing an earthly kingdom. This is a different kind of kingdom. And it's going to come through you. And so I'm going away for a while. But I'm giving you some stuff. He's about and I'm expecting you to do some great things. Oh, you got it. And when I come back, this place isn't going to look the same. you got to get this. He says to his disciples, you got to get this. I'm not sure that they got it at the moment. I've only made the world of but it certainly became very clear once things Folded. And as we look back, we can see, oh, yeah, this is what Jesus meant. Things that seem Makes sense. Just like don't start here, like he has made the world of worse. You know, verse 27 is disturbing. Uh, it, is, it is for me. The king comes back and, and says, bring those people who didn't want to be my subjects, and we'll just execute them right here. Anybody else find that disturbing? I don't find that disturbing. But I think Jesus' point with that is simply we get to choose our king. Okay, He's not going to force us then, to be his subjects. Uh, stand with my we get to pick. On the stage. We get to pick. The pick our king. And if we don't want God to be our king here, why would we want God to be our king in eternity? If we don't want God in our lives here, why would we want God in our lives in eternity? And it's not that God doesn't want to be in our lives. It's not. I mean, he, he wants to be in our lives so bad that he sacrificed his only son. Right? God's desire is that every one of us would be adopted into his family, that every one of us would be part of his kingdom, that every one of us would choose to make him king in our lives. He wishes that nobody would perish. That's the heart of God. You've got to understand that. He just gives us the opportunity to choose. In 2 Peter chapter 3, peter it's been a while. Jesus has been gone for a while. And people were starting to grumble, like, when's he no. coming back? Oh, He's being a little slow about coming back, like 2,000 years later. Come on, so guys. Much. But anyway, he, he's not back, and this is what Peter says. He explains he why. He says, the Lord's not slow in keeping his promise. In other words, I Jesus thought for sure. Slow he's going to do it. He come back. Well, and some understand slowness. Peter Instead, he's patient. How many slides are on this one? Not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. God loves people. God loves you. Is that the end he wants to be in your life. Yeah. He wants to be your heavenly father. He wants you to be a kid of the king. Yeah, that's, that's okay. it's off. That's his dream. Okay, and yeah, he wants it off. so badly, he was willing to send his only son and crucify him. So that the mm -hmm. And Gary for the video. video be oh, sorry. <laughs> so his spirit and his kingdom will come and live inside. And the truth is, he's got a better plan for your life than you do. And he's just waiting for you to invite him in. He's waiting for you to ask for his forgiveness. And to say, I want you to be my king. I want you to be king of my life. And he will do a much better job leading your life than you ever will. Yes. Now, yes, my guess is off. there are some of us who have never done that. 
never asked him to come into our lives. Amen. Never asked him to do anything. And I want to give you a chance song, to do that before we end. And, and, and so here's what I'm going to ask us to do. All of us, if everyone, will close your eyes and bow your head. <laughs> They're going to out video, and then Van's not playing right after that. Mike is talking. I want to yeah. be your kid. I want to be in your kingdom. I want to be a kid of the king. I want. I need my sin forgiven. If you've never done that, I want you to do that today. And you can just okay. repeat after me in the quiet of your mind. Just so when Mike comes out, we'll still follow voice. Mike on two, but then we'll set the other cameras, one, three, and seven to uh, to the safety shots. Okay. I've not done a very good job being king. Will you be the king preach, in my life? Preach, 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 preach. Will you forgive my sin? Let's make a lot of coffee. Will you come and live in my heart? God, will you show me my part to play in being salt and light? Will you show me my part to play in, in making a difference in and through your church? Would you make my life count in this world? And when you come back, God, would you just help me to have something to show for what you've given me? In Jesus' name. And we're fading in black. And the video is coming in. Give me a 20 second warning. Yeah, 10 Where's the audio from the video? It's a good question. Where's the audio? Do you know? Where is my. Uh, it's a big no, it's 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 yeah, it's more. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, it's not. Okay, no, uh, use two to follow Mike as he walks on the stage. Okay, you see him. Just follow him. 12, 11, okay, perfect. Do my as well. He's already out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. All right, so if you just prayed that prayer with Chris, we're so excited for you. We would love to celebrate you, okay, celebrate so with you afterwards in the prayer areas. Do, There's yeah. two prayer areas indicated in the back the of the auditorium. So afterwards, if you could just stop by there, we would love to yeah. give you some next steps. So we'll have, also, we'll have another if you could just drop right. that in the right buckets when they come yeah. by, after you mark okay. it off saying, I've committed yeah, my life to want. Christ. You prayed that prayer with Chris. So ushers, if you could just take your... Your positions. Now we're going to prepare our tithes and, and offerings. Back down, back down. So there's a Clear few different off. ways you can give. You can give, like, okay. you can give just simply like passing, and and placing right. it in the buckets as they come by, or you can just give through text, or you can give online. As a millennial, I find the easiest way to give and the most simplest, simplistic way to give is online. Thanks for clarifying. So that if you could just drop those simplistic. in, that would be great. So. I just want to quickly say all these things that What's we have, that this environment, this Who's place, these volunteers, this staff, this amazing worship team, it would not be able to happen if it wasn't for you guys, if it wasn't for your giving. And I know sometimes we can take it for granted. Right now, I just want to celebrate that. I want to celebrate you guys. I want to celebrate your faithfulness. Yeah, we're going to go straight to the offering video. These things, we can't just snap our fingers and wake up what? and it just happens. Chill what? So, it's not saying, please give, please give, please give, please give. Is that the it's professional saying, broadcast so term? Thank you so much for your faith. No, so much. Is that the broadcast term God. for fade? Thank you for God for just blessing us. Chill. Blessing the people Chill. who get to walk through these doors every Sunday. So, let's pray. Cakes are clapped. Dear God, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for this, <laughs> this chance just to give to oh my. People, God, because your ministry is moving. Your ministry can you push is working. God, on subtly on seven. To find my own ministry. God, allow as gently my, as you my can. My gifts, my, my talents, just to serve your kingdom, oh God. Allow these these first fruits that I'm giving to you just to serve okay. your kingdom far greater than I could ever do. These things we pray in your name. Amen. Okay. Ready for video. Video. Fade. Video. Video is live. Giving video. Offering video. Beautiful. The yeah, seven's presets don't really work that great because be, uh, uh, who's leading this one? Is she coming straight out to lead? Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, no, Micah's, Micah's going to do back out from the okay. okay. So when Micah comes back out, we're so okay. just continue on two to follow him out. Right. You can watch three until he comes out. Then actually, take pan two over. Yeah, just follow him. Yeah, just follow him out. That way, I have options for when I. Hmm. It's easier to see when you're trying to move things around in the middle, right? 
No, he has to look at the little ones anyways. Uh, <clears throat> I'm gonna stay on her just in case something would happen, but okay. I don't see him yet. There he is. Okay. Pan so now we're gonna prepare to take communion, and your communion elements what? can be found That's in the good. far left side of your so row we'll in a cup a holder, um, in a cup. Okay. So yes, that means That's you don't have to interact with other what human beings in order to get them. So if you can't find them in a cup holder because you don't have a cup holder, they're probably in the banister in front of you or they're on the ground. So once again, you can just pass those across. Yeah. Everyone can grab their individual elements. Um, there's yeah. two layers to the elements. Wait, it's on the first one reveals the wafer, and the second one, hopefully you don't spill on yourself, is the juice. So as you guys are doing that, is key tie on or off right now? First Corinthians it's just in preview. It's not live. Right. So it's fine. Yeah, but we don't 11, need to it says this. Right. Yeah, so I'm just gonna cut to. Yes. I'm just gonna cut to it. I'm not gonna keep tight. Yeah. Lord Jesus, Sorry, on the night we're, on the, we're on the same page. We took bread. Now we are. And we had given That's an awesome looking communion slide. This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, Can you, after seven. supper, he took the cup, okay. saying, "This cup is the new covenant in my blood." You Do want this, this side? whenever you drink it. Yeah, put them on over here. Remember oh, me. But like or right there. Eat this in, the, in the right order. Drink this in the right cup. Uh, both and proclaim the Lord's right death there. until he comes. So he yeah. So then yeah. whoever eats the bread or drinks Maybe a little the tighter. cup of the Lord okay. in an unworthy manner Just don't will be guilty of sinning yeah. against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves so before they eat <laughs> of the bread yeah. and drink the cup. So often, we're often asked, because different churches believe different things, how the communion works here is there's a few requirements. The first one is if you just prayed that prayer, prayer with Chris, we're so excited for you. But if you haven't, if you've never prayed that prayer before, you've never accepted that free gift, we would love for you just to hold on to these elements. And after the service, you can stop by again in the prayer areas and someone can walk you through that, how you can just accept that free gift and then take those elements. The second one is just as it said in the scripture, just as it said uh, the Apostle Paul had said, we must examine ourselves. We must make it right with God. Yeah, God knows everything that's going on in your life, but you think that you can keep it a secret. Make it right. Make it right with him. Make it right with him, with your relationship with him. So take your time. You can sit. You can stand. Whenever you're ready, take those elements. Take a moment of prayer. Make it personal. Make it authentic. And whenever you're ready, you can stand and worship. Okay, so uh, Franny's next singing, right? Okay, so I'll put two on her. As soon as the lights come up a little bit. There we go. All right, we're going to do one more song. And when you're ready, stand up, please. Oh. What? My key thing was on. So it's already up. Wow, that was... I know. It was I didn't realize that was I up. I thought we'd leave it. Push on three. Christian will say Chris need the cue to go back on and she knows that. Okay, zoom five. Two make two tight shot. Two? Yeah. Give me a pretty tight. And then you're gonna pull out after you get yeah. pull. Push on one, and pan over to Matt. Push and pan over to Matt. You're ready to pull on seven. Pan down as you pull. Zoom on two. Push on two. What in the world are you guys talking about? Okay, let's get on two. So we're pull on three. Don't move, just pull. Find a, a guitar or something for seven. Libby. Libby. Ready? And 
take. Pull out on two and pan down a little bit. that pull on two. Can you push on Libby on seven? Can you put two on something? Put two on the drums. Pull on two. Find something new for uh, seven. Put put two back on. Put two back on uh, her on Franny though first. Two's live. Okay, that's good. Put seven on something else. That's good. That's good. Okay, I'll put it over here. Put it on her. Okay, pull back on that one. Pan down. A push on three, on Libby. folks back in the prayer areas they are in the back if you're online let us know we'll get a hold of you and we'll be glad to pray with you and if you're not why do we just by the feel that talk to the folks Sorry. out there did i push that to get I you in the no, game. No, no. i told her to clear God's all God's stuff for you that is so good you just because the keto thing was live so I can't oh i didn't realize i did that I it was let's off. pray so lord jesus life. thank you I know. And that even when life is hard can you so pan you three over? Yeah, even gonna put when things are hard, Lord, okay. you're with us. That's, that's fine. fine. All hard okay, just pull it out a little bit more. God, I want to see his feet. Yeah, that's good. The sound of my that we would have something good to show you. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, keep playing. Lord, a story. Okay, we're going to cut the three, and we're going to pull on three Lord, as our last cut, and then cut that video as soon as he's done. You have blessed us with. That we would leverage these gifts. But if he moves, follow him until then. Resources so follow him until then. Until until then. For your glory and, for and then get ready to cut the three. Yep. Of the people in this world who need you. Song Help, us to song. <laughs> Help us to be those folks. Help us to walk with you. Okay, right. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, pull Have a three. good week, everyone. Can I cut the eight? Yes, please. Yes, please. And that's good right. Good on Micah. Yeah, that's a wrap, people. Average <laughs> blasphemy. Well, good job, guys. That is a wrap. That is a wrap, baby. You turn good it job. Massive improvement from that great job. from run through the <laughs> service. High fives. We're finally awake after DS. Great fives, everybody. Great fives.